It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by John McCarthy of Small College Basketball, and I am very excited to have you on the program today, sir. Of course, we follow small college sports right here on Midwest Sportsnet throughout the Midwest and beyond, and we're talking small college basketball. Now, of course, it's basketball season as well. You all just this past week released your Bevo Francis Top top 100 Watch List for 23-24, and so that, that's a list that I've been following for a number of years, and it is uh, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA, NCCAA, USCAA. It's it's men's basketball players throughout the small college ranks. Tell us a little bit about what this list is about, what this award is about, the Bevo Francis Award. Yeah, first of all, thanks so much for having me on. It's a real pleasure to, uh, to be on with you. It's an honor to be on with you. And uh, the Bevo Francis story I've known about for a long time since, uh, frankly, my junior year in high school, I was introduced to it visiting the campus uh, while I was in Ohio. And uh, to fast forward many, many years, uh, had the opportunity to help induct Bevo Francis into the NAI Hall of Fame when I was there and had the opportunity to meet Bevo before he passed away. And uh, working with our longtime athletic director, Jeff Lanham, Uh, I pitched this idea of creating the Bevo Francis Award for two basic purposes. Number one is to keep the legacy and the story of Bevo Francis alive. And for those that are you're watching that may not be familiar with Bevo Francis or his story, I encourage you to go to Google, go to YouTube and pull it up. It is one of the great, most fascinating stories in college basketball history. And the second purpose was to be able to honor ultimately one player a year, but ultimately bring great attention to the top players at the small college level in the country. And, and frankly, we've done that by publish, publishing the watch list. We go with 100 players that came out, as you just mentioned, on January 15th. We'll limit that down to 50 players on February 15th. And then on March 15th, we will limit that down to 25. And shortly thereafter, we'll put out the video of the finalists. And then we've been announcing the, the winner of the Bevo Francis Award at, at uh, halftime of the NCAA Division I National Championship game for the past several years. We plan to do so again uh, this year. But uh, it is quite a process. If you can imagine that collectively between all the divisions you just mentioned, Division II, three, NAI, NCCA, and USCAA, we represent roughly 11 to 1,200 colleges and universities throughout the country which means using some basic math, we're looking at roughly 13 to 16,000 players that play annually at these levels. So to choose 100, if you're on the list of 100 out of 13 to 16,000, you're already pretty elite, uh, let alone the winner. 100 out of 13 to 16,000 is really elite. Uh, So I form a committee, a national awards committee, to help us with that process. And I'd like to think that I spend a probably a ridiculous amount of time watching games, reading stories, box scores, comments, whatever we can pick up to try to learn about the, the players, typically with two video screens up at night, going from game to game to game. And uh, and over the years, I've gotten to know a lot of the coaches, but put together a committee, roughly 15 to 18 coaches from throughout the country, different regions, different levels, to help gather as much information as we can Uh, to make the most educated decisions we can based on the criteria. And I will mention that winning, being a part of a winning team, helping your team win is actually a big part of this. And and one final comment on on this is that um, before Bevo passed away, we actually got his blessing to name this award uh, in his honor to keep his legacy alive. And I can tell you his family, who I've met and spent a bit of time with his wife, his children, his grandchildren ha- happen to follow this very closely as well. Uh, they're quite quite engaged following along with this process. So this has been a labor of love with the Bevo Francis Award. That, just, that makes it that much more special, I'm sure. It, it does. Ab- absolutely. <laughs> well, well, tell me a little bit then about small college basketball, because I, I you know, you might think, well, the name really describes it all. And you, you talked about basically everything that's not Division One, NCAA Division One. So tell us a little bit of, uh, about what this is all about. So it's we officially launched, had a press conference in November of 2015 to launch small college basketball. Having said that, I found documents on my computer back to 2009 with starting the concept and the idea. And I think where this really kind of stemmed from was that I was on the Division II basketball committee as the uh, chair of the South Region 
one of eight people to help run the Division II tournament as part of my background, having having coached prior to that uh, about eight years of college basketball. And it's obviously a passion. I'm the kid who literally slept with the ball as a kid, shoveled the driveway in the snow to, to play, kind of all those stories you hear about, that was actually me as a kid. And I'm a junkie, uh, truly. And went through that process of assistant coach, head coach, athletic director, and on the Division II committee. And I happened to be on the committee during the 50th anniversary of Division II basketball when we decided to figure out as a committee, what are we going to do to celebrate this at the Elite Eight? And we chose two basic things to celebrate. One, we chose an all-time Elite Eight team from players over the first 50 years that played in the Elite Eight. And number two, we started the Division II All-Star Game at that time, held at the, the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, uh, which was just a thrill for me. And out of that, decided to start the Collegiate Basketball Invitational and did that for a couple of years, bringing in the top small college players in the country. And that was such a thrill. Uh, without belaboring with, with too many details, after a couple of years, I took the role as the director of the NAI National Basketball Championship and I'll phrase this nicely, that didn't exist anymore, the Collegiate Basketball Invitational, shortly after I took that role. And that was a little heartbreaking to me, knowing that was a passion, the Collegiate Basketball Invitational and doing something for the game that was great. And then in Kansas City, I started something called the um, Start March, where the road begins, and uh, helped to brand Kansas City as the college basketball capital of America. And that went really well. I had a great start to that. And it was just wonderful rallying to keep people in the community together. And, uh, and it was awesome. And after a year, um, I was uh, asked not to do that any longer in my current role or in my role at that time. And I kept thinking, what can I do that's great for the game that's going to last, that's going to leave a legacy, that's going to live on be beyond me? And so there was where small college basketball was born, is this passion for the game, passion for the game at the small college levels, but doing something that is not about John McCarthy, because this is going to live on beyond me, is to build the infrastructure and grow this somewhat strategically, slowly, so that we're able to make sure that this can be passed on to the next person uh, beyond me. And thus far, uh, we've, I think, quite strategically started with the Bevo France Award, the Hall of Fame and Hall of Fame Classic. And now I've added four other national awards, the Alumni Association, the Small College Basketball Foundation, the Champions Classic, and, and on and on and built this out, the Small College Basketball Podcast, and an awful lot of social media that's taken off pretty good. So um, this is a real passion, a real labor of love. Um, but it is not designed to be about me. This is about the game and about leaving a legacy that goes on well beyond me. Speaking now with John McCarthy from Small College Basketball here on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you, please take the time, like this video. We would appreciate that. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I, you know, I you talk about the uh, the awards, and I I think man, I I really appreciate the breakdown there. there. There's more history than than I realized in all of that, and obviously I can see that it's something that's personal, and it, and it is. You you mentioned labor of love, and and it clearly is just that, John. I appreciate uh, hearing that from you. Uh, different awards that have come into play, even like you talked about the events, the Champions Classic. That's one of the events that's going on or has gone on already this athletic year. Talk a little bit about that and some of those events. Yeah. So the, I called the uh, uh, former athletic director at Northern State with the Pitchton idea. Uh, I had the idea of how do we bring together some of the top teams in Division Two and Division Three and the NAI? The Hall of Fame Classic has evolved to be specifically Division Two because we have an exemption from the Division Two Conference Commissioners Association. So it made sense that we bring in the, some of the top teams in Division Two in the country. But I also was looking to say, while all the awards, the Hall of Fame, everything else, social media, podcast, et cetera, is, is for everybody. I, I recognize that the Hall of Fame Classic is specifically Division II uh, with that exemption in place. But that begged the question of what else can you do for Division Three? What else can you do for the NAI? And so we thought, what a cool concept for 
basketball junkies everywhere to create a national platform with 12 teams for the top of division three, division two, and the NAI, bring them all to one site, six games a day for a couple of days with a first class banquet, you know, go live with the, the press conferences and bring great attention to some of the top teams, players, coaches at the small college level, all in one site. And the reason I called Northern State in Aberdeen, South Dakota, you know, quite bluntly, they've led the all small college in attendance for something like 15 plus years now. And so we got an 8,000 seat arena, average between 4,000 and 4,500 people a game. It just made sense to make that call. Uh, as I pitched the idea, uh, it was within minutes when the athletic director, who's now the athletic director at Wisconsin Green Bay, uh, said, yes, we need to figure this out. We need to do this. Our community would embrace this. They would love it. So we moved it to uh, to Aberdeen, South Dakota. Uh, and it's been such a thrill uh, to, to pull off this idea in the head uh, that has now become a little bit of a staple, if you will, in the, uh, the college basketball scene now. And it's, it's neat how many coaches around the country uh, are so interested in playing the event because the exposure it brings to their program and how neat it is as, the, as we have a coach's social after the, the banquet where the players are able to interact during a banquet, the coaches are able to sit around with a social afterwards and, and meet people they probably would not have met otherwise. And it's really become a, a pretty special uh, event in college basketball landscape. That sounds like fun to not only put together, be a part of, but I, let me go back. Sounds like fun to be put to put together and to be on that end of it. Of course, I'm sure the the coaches and the players and and those who are involved appreciate it too. The Bevo Francis Award is what brought us into this, but it's not the only award that that you all do. And there is actually a a new award that I believe this is the first year for that that's coming out. And it uh, well, I'll, let me let you describe it. The Trevor Hudgens Award. Yeah, we're really proud of this. And I do, do just want to mention before I dive into that, I mentioned before we have five national awards now, and the Trevor Hudgens is the, the latest one we just announced. In addition to the Bevo Francis Award, which has probably caught the most attention of any award that we have, somebody created a Wikipedia page for it uh, not too long ago. i really, really pleased with that. But I did get a, a call on that and said, do you, did you create that Wikipedia page? And I said, I have no idea how to do that. So no, I did not. And uh, But we have the Lifetime Achievement Award that comes through our Alumni Association. We have the Harry Statham Coach of Impact Award. We have the Larry Smith Award. And now the latest is the Trevor Hudgens Award. And, and the thought process there and we've, I've had this thought for quite some time and trying to find the right namesake for it, is that the Bevo Francis Award, uh, it signifies the player that had the finest overall season in all of small college men's basketball um, in a particular year, year by year by year. It doesn't matter whether they're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, and ba but based on the criteria, which includes winning and, and awards and records and statistics and so on, um, who had that best season? And we'll go through that process as we talked about. But what I was fascinated with in addition to that is who's had the best career? Who's had who's in their final year of eligibility? And it's a little tricky with a COVID year now. Uh, but who's who's had the finest overall four years and possibly five with the, the COVID year collectively looking at um, how did you help your team to great success? What award? What awards did you win already? What records did you break and standards you've set um, and, and so on? And we were looking for this namesake and Trevor Hudgens comes along and I followed him very closely. He played his, his first collegiate games in our, um, our Hall of Fame Classic when he's a redshirt freshman. And the short story on Trevor, and I could go on for a long time uh, about him, is at uh, Northwest Missouri State, redshirted his freshman year and played four years after that. They played in three NCAA tournaments because the one year was canceled due to COVID. Um, he never lost an NCAA tournament game. Went 17-0, and won three consecutive national championships. Uh, he played 139 games in his career. They won 131 of those 139 games. He was the MIAA Player of the Year for three consecutive years, the NABC National Player of the Year for two consecutive years. He was the Elite Eight MVP as a freshman. He was the Elite Eight MVP as a senior. Um, he set the all-time NCAA record for three-pointers made in a season. He set the all-time record for scoring at the school and assists at the school. The MIAA has been around for over 100 years. He's now the all-time leading scorer in the history of the MIAA, and he – 
I think for you, when you spend time with people that know him and his family well, I think most would tell you he's a better human being than he is a player. And he's a pretty darn good player. So we we thought we've found the guy in terms of credibility as a human being that's that's going to be that great example as a as a person that also has that that unbelievable career that people would love to emulate. My gosh, you play your entire career and never lose an NCAA tournament game, win four straight conference championship games, and win 131 of 139 games. Um, that's pretty impressive. And so uh, I called him with the idea of getting his blessing to name this award after him. And I knew him a little bit. He won our Bevo Francis Award. Um, I, I know he and his coach and, and so on a little bit. And uh, he was in an airport when I called him. And he's a rather a bit of an introvert, very quiet, soft-spoken. Um, but he just said, I I'm pacing now. Uh, this is so cool. This would be so great. I'm just so grateful. And, uh, and it's neat to see somebody that's been that grateful. Uh, and I've been in touch with him on a very regular basis. But uh, the Trevor Hudgens Award, we will put out the first watch list of 25 players. Uh, first time ever on February 1st. So coming up in roughly a week from now, uh, that watch list will go 25 players on February 1st, 15 players on uh, March 1st. And then we will go with the finalist video right around the time of the final four. We haven't said the exact date. And then the same thing, we'll plan to announce the winner of the first ever Trevor Hudgens Award at halftime of the NCAA Division I National Championship game. And by the way, we will then host the national award show uh, in Kansas City. I'm finalizing the, the date and location, but it'll be in April in Kansas City. Uh, where we will present in person the Trevor Hudgens Award, the uh, the Larry, I'm sorry, the Harry Statham Coach of Impact Award, the Lifetime Achievement Award, and the Bevo Francis Award. We will also fly in uh, or bring in all the national championship coaches from NAI, NCAA II, NCAA III, and uh, the NCCA Division I and II. Uh, we'll invite them there. It'll be a wonderful celebration of our game with the National Awards Show uh, in April in Kansas City. Wow. So, so your spring, you, you have some stuff happening then in the next few months, you know, not a lot of downtime. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. And, and by the way, this is my passion. I have another full-time job. I serve as executive director <laughs> of a national nonprofit. And so uh, this is, this is the passion project. And uh, yes, I'm, um, I'm hoping to reacquaint myself with, uh, with my wife in about April, maybe late April after the award show. <laughs> I, I wish you well with that. I <laughs> <laughs> We right here on Midwest Sportsnet will do our part to help promote because uh, we appreciate small college sports and, and what you're doing and, and the difference I believe you're making for small college sports on the whole. But in for small college basketball in particular, as the name would imply, small college basketball right there, a lot going on. And John, I appreciate you taking some time with me today. I think I had a couple of other questions, but my goodness, you've you've answered them all very thorough. And I I just I really appreciate that. I've learned a lot more than just what I get from the website. And I do frequent the website, which is smallcollegebasketball.com. Folks can go there, find out more, check out the press releases. Uh, we talked about NAI players that were on that top 100 list. We're going to talk about some Division II players on that list as well and uh, definitely look forward to, to seeing the first release for the Trevor Hudgens Award. Anything else you'd like to add, John? I, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying visiting with you. Yeah, just, just a big old thank you to you for giving this platform to us. Um, this has truly been this, this passion project, this labor of love, and there's been so many people that have been so kind over the years. I want to thank all those that have expressed so much kindness, whether it's our coaches, our Hall of Fame inductees, and people like yourself um, that have been so kind to have us on to help spread the gospel, if you will, of small college basketball. And we just we've been adamant about creating a platform that is for the coaches, that is for the players. And, and you'll note that it's very important to us that we're a force for, for good for the positive. I hear plenty of the other stories. Uh, it isn't our place there. We're here uh, to celebrate our game, to celebrate the players, coaches, contributors, uh, and, and the great history of our game. And we're very fortunate that we've grown that platform uh, and we're very grateful for your help in, in doing just that. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. John McCarthy, Small College Basketball. Again, you can find out more at smallcollegebasketball.com. 
and watch this video again because you'll learn a whole lot. Go back and you might pick up something you missed the first time through. Uh, John, we do appreciate you being here on the summit with us today, and we will continue to follow and continue to promote. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.